Hey family, I'm Coach Cass. Welcome to The Hub. On today's episode, I have Regina, who's from Chicago, y'all, and she is fabulous and 59. So let's go ahead and get right into it to see what's up with Regina. Hey, girl. Hey, how you doing, Regina? I'm good. How are you? I am wonderful. So tell us a little something of your background, Regina. Like, what has love been like? Share a little something, something with us. Well, you know, it's been one of those things. Sometimes you feel like it's been good and other times you'd be like, ooh, I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> what I'll tell you is that I, you know, married and divorced, um, have two wonderful young adults um, and am now sort of approaching that second half of my life looking for someone amazing to share it with. Ooh, I love that. The amazing part. Okay. So tell us, what is your question? Well, so um, I work in a predominantly white space. Um, I move sort of in those types of spaces. I do a lot of traveling. And while I get an opportunity to meet a ton of folks, I don't get a chance to meet a ton of um, Black men in particular, which is my mm. preference, or yeah. men of color, which would be sort of an extension of that. Um, and so, and definitely don't meet a ton who are single. Right. Okay. And so just kind of wondering sort of how does someone particularly in this stage of their life, right, sort of mm -hmm. move into sort of, again, that amazing sort of a relationship, right? Because at this point, we're old enough to know a whole lot of stuff we might not have known, you know, in our 20s and 30s. At this point, you think that finding love and being in love and just kind of making a love work should mm -hmm. be something that we are all committed to doing. And girl, sometimes it's not. Sometimes you you know you meet folks and and people want to. I think people want to reclaim their their youth and stuff. I don't want to do that. I, I want to move into this next season, right? The the sensational sixties. I want to like move that. into it like you know with somebody who has the same kind of goals that I have, and I just want to coast into that. I don't want to. I don't want the strife and the up. I don't want any of that. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I understand that. Right. So I have definitely had women ask me, well, coach Cass, you know, I wouldn't mind dating a white man, but I don't know what to do with him. That's, that's essentially what, I, well, what I've been told. And in this time, right. With all of sort of the racial tension, you just like, Ooh, <laughs> right. <laughs> hallelujah. Okay. Exactly. So there's, there's several things that come up for me when you, when you speak. So in terms of connecting with a black man in today's day and age you know one is to believe that they're out there sometimes when we run in our circles and never see them we kind of come down to you know what they're all taken you know i don't know they're just nobody's left that's good you know um so it specifically um reminds me of one of my clients named diane and diane is of the same age and she met someone wonderful and he is a chemist and doing well for himself and and you know and and she met him online okay yeah she met him online so sometimes we don't see the people in our circles how do you enter new circles easily is it joining a new facebook group is it joining a new meetup group is it you know standing at the supermarket you know like there's people everywhere but the right. easiest um barrier to overcome in terms of meeting new people is online and there are millions more people online in today's day and age and there's specific sites for your age range and there's specific sites that have everyone. And I've had clients meet someone on every site. So I don't necessarily say, okay, well, this is the site to go to. Like she specifically met her man, I wanna say it's on Hinge. And I know someone else that met it on Tinder, Facebook dating, you know, Christian mingle. So, you know, it's, yeah, yeah. It, it, it really is what, what clicks with you. Cause some sites you, you might swipe and be like, uh-uh, Coach Cass, like this is not it. This That's is been so, my experience. <laughs> this is so I have tried it. 
<laughs> this is so creepy. So that just might not be the site for you. What I realize in, in certain areas, just your, your matches or whoever winks at you, whatever might be creepy. So you might try that site for two weeks and then you try another one. The thing is sometimes we just base all of online dating right, online. on one experience, experience that we had. Yeah. How, how long did you try that online dating experience for? So I actually tried it maybe in total for about maybe six months. And okay. then I was like, this is crazy. Right. And so I stopped. I didn't start it again. I just recently Ooh. started. And because a girlfriend of mine said, I've had some great experiences. I had some great dates. And I was like, okay, let me try this one more time. So this time has been, it's been a month so far. And it's still kind of creepy or just kind of strange. Or What I will say is, right. The men who you think are, you know, calm, you know, just really confident, really accomplished, they don't say a word to you. Mm. Them ones who are not, you know, they step to you in a heartbeat, be like, what's Looking up, like girl? Ray Ray right now. How you doing? <laughs> exactly. They, they are right there in your face all the time. And I'm like, oh, boo, we, we probably not a good match. I'm just saying. But. Hi. Oh, man. So one of the things I, um. I definitely want you to think about, and I, I do have, um, for everyone listening and watching, I do have an online dating starter kit on the website, Inspire Many, and on in there is really setting your intention for this. Sometimes we kind of jump on the, the online dating and we start swiping. We're like, okay, this is not it. And then you get frustrated and then you close it down, right? That's right. So a, a different way to approach this is, okay, well, my intention is to connect with a love in which I can be my authentic self. Right. My intention is blank, right? And just being true to that intention because I'm sure you, you are high up in administration in the collegial field, right? So did you intentionally go for your position or did it kind of like just happen by osmosis? Like your degrees and everything you've done, <laughs> did it just? Never, right? Never. It's always full intention, always full speed ahead, right? So very much, I hear you. That you gotta be intentional about it. You gotta so so I had not considered like setting my intention about dating. I mean, yeah. Clearly, I mean in my mind, I said, you know, wow, well, I'd like to be in an authentic relationship, one that's loving and caring and kind, right, and and one where we can build a life together and all of that. But I've never really thought about it sort of as you've said it. So I'm I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna do that. Okay, you know, it's just it's just something to try. Yeah. You know, yeah. I I tell my clients all the time, let I, I push a little, I push a little, but you know, it's 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 the way i see it is nowhere else in our life That's do right. we put things in a box right yeah, so yeah. with your career if opportunity comes you open that door and say yes That's right. That's right. but then with love when opportunity comes we're like i don't i don't like it in this like, package, so. That's right you'd be like oh <laughs> i don't know if i like it like that yeah can we can we just reconfigure this and right. slash a little color over here you know right. so then now let's get over to the black men versus the white men <clears throat> have you ever dated a white man never never and and quite frankly i've only found a couple of them handsome okay i mean and i don't know sort of like if that's a block right mm -hmm. um because clearly but but black men are just fine to me right <laughs> I, I i don't i don't know how to describe it other than they just do it for me right Ooh. um and mm. like um you know maybe latino men right i've seen a couple asian men who are just be like but white men just i've yeah. never and i and part of it i think is having grown up in the 60s right mm -hmm. so growing up in a time where there was a lot of racial unrest Yes. Living currently in a time where there's a lot of racial unrest. It's just, there's a part of me that just says, Ooh, and, yeah. and I, and I have, and the thing is when I have talked to some of my friends, then the thing that I've said is you got to find love where you find it. It doesn't matter whether it's, you know, polka dot with green stripes and, you know, pink bow, take it where you can find it. I don't know if but I in my own that. mind, I've not, I've not said that. Okay. Okay, so you know, sometimes we don't take our own advice, right? I know, I know, I so, know. <laughs> so, okay, so at least you said you were open to Latino and Asian. So I'm just saying that in terms of the filters that you're putting on these apps, I want you to be a little bit more open because you just might swipe into something that's intriguing. I have very close friends that are in interracial relationships, whether it's a white man with a black woman or a black woman with a white man, yeah. and they're happy. 
Yes. You know? And they I know are folks like that. Genuinely happy. Yes. So just to add to, you know, something for you to think about, something to yeah. journal about, something to reflect upon, is to think about, you know, what if, you know, God put an amazing man in my life and yeah. he just happened to be not black, right? Yeah. What, what does that look like? What is the relationship that I want really to feel like? You know, that's where we should base more on yeah. than the shape. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. if, it's, if you can connect with a white man that wants to understand the black experience or support it or whatever, he won't get everything. We understand that, right? But if he's willing to support you or uplift you, because I, ha I know couples that are white, white, and black, black. So it's not like, oh, I'm white, but I'm black. On a, it, exactly. Or I'm black, but I'm white. No, no, no. Exactly. I know couples that are white, white, and black, black. And they get along just fine because they honor each other's experience and they don't wow. judge it, you know? So yeah. sometimes it's a fear of judgment of why we, you know, kind of yeah. kick some people to the side. Fear of judgment from our friends and family, like, oh, that's what we gonna do? Exactly. Because right? you, know, you know I got at least a couple cousins who would be like, girl, <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> we got cousins. But remember, those cousins are not keeping your feet warm at night. They are that's not true. rubbing your feet. They're not that's Netflix true. and chilling. They're not that's telling true. you you're beautiful on a daily basis. You know, so that's sometimes true. we we hold ourselves back. Yeah. Because of the fear. That's true. Right? And, and you, are, you are so right. And, and also, I think it's a, a fear that they won't understand and the fear of, you know, not really wanting to have to teach somebody everything, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so I'm a huge uh, movie and theater buff, right? Okay. I love going to black theater for yeah. one particular reason. I love being able to get every reference that they make, right? Oh, uh, nice. And so there's something about that connectivity that I just, I think in my mind, and I could be completely wrong, but in my mind, I think they ain't gonna get it. <laughs> And you, and you feel like, it, you know, at work, you got to work so hard to do all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to work that hard on that aspect of my relationship. Right. But again, that's just me in my mind. So, so let me get out of my own mind because I have no idea if that's going to really happen. I just think it will. So, so Regina, this is what's coming up for me okay. is that I just want you to practice, right? Okay. I want you to look at this whole dating thing as practice. Okay, so taking off the weight of who you need to become in order to play the role for whoever, I just want you to say, you know what? I want to practice dating. And if something settles and sticks, cool. If it keeps moving, cool. You know, so when you look at this whole thing as practice, because sometimes we prejudge because we're like, oh, this man can't be my husband, you know, and so we don't even give it a chance. That's true. Because we're like, okay, like he doesn't fit into my my scheme of things or my right. role or who I am, you know? So yeah. sometimes we prejudge before we even give it a chance to experience it. Okay. So I'm like not telling you to, to sleep with everybody. Let's be clear, right? I'm just saying practice right, right, right. like, like right. some chicken, have a virtual <laughs> day, you know, play a couple board games, six feet distant, walking in a park, you know, like know, I'm, I'm, right. I'm talking about the simple stuff. That's right. But just, right. just to see the connectivity, which you talk yeah. about, yeah. and if it could, if it could stick. Okay. I, I like that. I can try that. You like it? I do. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So tell me, what is one takeaway that you're taking away from today? Um, I'm going to get out of my head and mm -hmm. I'm going to be willing to practice, right? I'm going to be open to whatever love looks like um, and I'm going to just be open. I love it. Oh, I so love it. So yeah. I know that you are currently single at the time of this recording. Yes, so how very can, single. How can people, him, uh, slide into your DMs just in case. What? How, do, how can they find you? They can find me on Facebook. Okay, and what is your name on Facebook? Regina Dixon Reeves. All right. Okay, y'all. Y'all heard it here. Regina Dixon Reeves. Just go ahead and slide into the DMs. I'm just right. saying. Thank you for coming, Regina. I so Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you. All right, family. So I am so excited that you guys were here to witness Regina. Um, whether you're listening in or watching, show her some love um, for being vulnerable. And I know so many of you have been in the same space. So if you've ever been 
apprehensive to date outside your race, I just invite you to start to think about it's practice. It's just practice and just see what sticks because you just never know. You might be surprised. And if you're apprehensive with online dating, go to inspiremany.com, inspiremany.com and click on the store. And in there is the online dating start, starter kit. Go ahead and grab it. It kind of is like a, a can, we have a candidate tracker in there and how to track your candidates to see if they're really viable. Um, some of the websites that I want you to check out, you know, my top seven websites to check out and some other things in there to really help you journal through your process when it comes to online dating. Let me know how it goes. In the meantime, see you on the next episode. Thanks for tuning in.